Welcome back, welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to start the disassembly process of this uh, 283 and uh, getting the transmission loosened from it. If we don't get started on it, we ain't never going to get it done, so we better get to getting it. Welcome back to this episode of In the Garage. Uh, this is the first engine that I have ever worked on that has this vent. So, um, if you'll notice, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't, but I'll show you. This valve cover, nor this valve cover has a PCV valve in it. Positive crankcase ventilation. So the crankcase ventilation comes out the back of the block right here and uh, just vents to atmosphere coming out here beside the bottom of the transmission. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this loose if we can. down here it's got a nut right up here on top right here that's got to come out and then we can get this vent tube out of the way I'm impatient. I have air tools, I'm gonna use air tools. But air tool is not gonna fit in here. One flat at a time, one flat at a time. There we go. That, that's got a lock washer. Is it a 716? I don't know how good your eyeball. Ooh, I believe it is. I am absolutely amazed 
that didn't break. Look how rusted that thing is. Mm-mm-mm. Now, I don't know if I had mentioned, I believe I have. Um, I have not rotated this engine yet. I gave it a little bit of a tug several months ago, and uh, it didn't move. So, we are either going to have to pull the starter off of this thing, and hopefully be able to get to the flywheel and use a pry bar, or we're going to have to pull the transmission off of it, leaving the torque converter bolted to the flywheel, I think. Yeah. Yes. See what we got here. Yes, sir. is loose so I will bring you back when we get her slid back out of the way all right good grief so we did what I thought we would end up having to do which is pull the transmission off the engine leaving the torque converter attached to the engine let me flip you around just seeing so finally got that loose let me tell you something about a cast iron power glide it got a little just about that much weight to them but uh also had to work the engine hoist up and down it sort of had the sort of had the transmission in a bind as far as level so uh once i got the engine sort of angled where it needed to be then uh, I was able to start seeing a gap. But uh, initially I thought these bolts came out and this whole piece came with it. But after I got to looking inside the uh, starter hole down there, I saw that the flywheel was encased inside that. So the flywheel obviously is bolted to the end of the crank, so I knew uh, that that wasn't going to happen, so I put bolts back in this and took these bolts out, and that was uh, 
that was when I was able to make a little leeway. Finally got it out. It looks like a episode of Murder She Wrote down there. But uh, hopefully we won't make too big of a mess down here. I'm about done for the night. So I might come in here next go around and see about three gallons of transmission fluid all over the floor. But ah, we'll deal with that if it happens. But anyway, I believe for tonight, that's going to do it. And uh, throughout the week, we'll, uh, we'll stay on this thing. And I'll tell you, transmission fluid in this thing looks phenomenal. So, I don't know. Maybe it might just clean up the outside of this thing and uh, replenish the transmission fluid and let this thing go. I don't know. It may work perfect when they parked it. I don't know, but anywho. All right, guys, it's a few days later. We have had a busy, busy, busy last few days. Uh, I won't get into it, but we've had some personal things going on, and uh, I have just uh, not been out here until yesterday. <clears throat> but I spent... Uh, I spent the better part of yesterday. Boy, my voice is shot. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, cleaning this transmission up. And if you'll remember earlier in the video, it was so bad you couldn't even see the word power glide on top of it. Um, I believe what has happened, this breather tube right here, what has been leaking basically the last probably several years of its life and had just poured down the bell housing and settled into anything it could settle into. It was uh, something funny. If you look right in here, there's a bolt that somebody lost and fell down in. There's the head of it right there um, that somebody lost. It was so bad, I didn't even know that that right there was a hole. It was just, you know, completely crammed full of stuff, so I'm still getting all that stuff out. I didn't think that y'all would enjoy just sitting here watching me scrape on a transmission. Uh, however, I did talk to the transmission guy and told him, uh, you know, the story and what the fluid looked like and what it smelled like, and he said there's really no reason to believe that the transmission is bad. Um... He said if the transmission fluid is nice and bright red and smells good, uh, there's really no reason to have to rebuild this transmission. So after talking with him, I decided to go ahead and clean this thing up and uh, go ahead and uh, paint it. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work and we just have to pull it out and then we'll take it to the transmission shop. And uh, one thing on this breather tube, I, I haven't really even looked at it. Um, I don't know if it's a paper gasket or a cork gasket or, or how it's sealed. But if it's either one of those, I will replace that with an O-ring. And uh, we'll stop. It's got some sort of like baffling system that uh, keeps oil from, from, you know, that has, that has uh, oil pressure. Um, you know, it, it comes straight out of the back of the block, just the same way as your uh, oil pressure sensor or your oil gauge feed line would do. So it has the same pressure. Um, so the baffling system keeps the oil from backtracking up through the tube and, and down beside the block. It just lets uh, air pressure out, the crankcase pressure. So um, we'll make sure all that stuff is working good because we don't want to be dumping oil on the ground.
head of that bolt is stuck down with a bunch of grime. Isn't that something? I bet whoever dropped that said, well, I'll never see that again. We can get this thing in braining. Hmm. Well, it was very uneventful. This looks a little more promising. <laughs> Wonder how far it's going to shoot out. Right. Now I don't know how much this thing holds, so this bucket might not be big enough. I do not know. Yeah, that transmission fluid looks great. No water. See how clean the end of this cap is. If it'll focus. There you go. Nothing on it. Just nothing. That's awesome. <laughs>
that's about as far as we're gonna get on this thing. I think I think it turned out pretty dang good. Especially when you compare it against what it did look like. This thing was a blooming mess. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think it turned out pretty good. Of course, we'll, we'll be replacing the seal and all of that stuff. But uh, I think we're just gonna take a chance at this thing being all right. And uh, we'll deal with the consequences later. This is not, I keep trying to remind myself, not just you, me, this is not a 100% restoration, even though it is really starting to look like one. Um, so th this is a budget, as, as budget as we can get it. And truth be known, out of everything that you see here that has been done throughout the series of this 57 Bel Air, including the price of the car, is right now less than four thousand dollars far less than four thousand dollars somewhere around the 3700 range so we're doing good we really haven't started really spending money yet but and that's coming and uh, but in, at the same time we're going to keep the same thing in mind this is a budget build um, and uh, we're going to do what needs to be done to make this thing enjoyable to drive, reliable to drive, fun to drive, uh, behaves on the road, and uh, does everything that would make an old car like this enjoyable to drive. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, hit your notification. That way you'll be notified every time I release new content. This is a few days late. Uh, like I stated earlier, had some things going on we have had to deal with. Uh, but we're a chugging and choo-chooing right along. And um, until next time, you guys go do some work.